What's up, everyone? This is El Destroyer 229, and welcome back to Let's Play Persona 5 Royal. Last time, we got through the rest of Maruki's palace. We managed to find our route to the treasure, sort of. We got about as close as we could, and now all we're basically doing right now is awaiting the promised day. We are basically kind of waiting for Maruki himself to basically show himself to us. Though it's a bit of a gamble, I think it's a pretty safe one. Considering that Maruki is generally a man of his word. Ah, man of his word. Excuse me. In this episode... We managed to grab a few more Mementos requests. We've managed to identify them, and so, even though there's not that much time remaining, we're going to spend what little time we have heading on over into Mementos. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first things first, let's go ahead and see our requests. Listen up. Seriously? Alright, so our last requests are now logged and we can go and take them down in Mementos. So let's go! Yes, let us go. I've been waiting for you. Lavenza? I came here to ask a favor of you, actually. Would you mind indulging me? Um... Sure? 
what kind of favor are, are you asking? I would like to engage you in combat. Say what? Now that I've regained my original form, I wish to duel you once more. I've witnessed just how much you've grown since defeating the malevolent god and completing your rehabilitation. As one who rules over power, I wish to judge such growth firsthand. Um, I'm sorry, one who rules over power? That is correct. As such an individual, it is my responsibility to gauge your power. It is a vital step to my self-discovery. My master has granted permission for us to engage in battle, but I will not force you to accept the challenge. Now, please come speak to me once you are prepared. <laughs> I'm itching for action! Let's do this! So yes, not only do you get a chance to fight against Caroline and Justine, which was initially available in the original Persona 5, but as part of a royal exclusive, you can fight Lavenza as just Lavenza. And oh boy, is that a much difficult, much more difficult fight. Lavenza is easily a lot more challenging than just fighting against the twins. And it's definitely a, the most difficult fight that you can have within the game. We're not gonna worry about that right this second. Instead, we're going to focus on some of the other stuff that we can do first. Stuff that was originally available within the original Persona 5 Royal game, and not New Game Plus. We will be taking on Lavenza. I'm scared, but that will be the last thing we do before leaving Mementos. Before we do anything in Mementos, though, I'm gonna go ahead and enter the Velvet Room. We do have a fusion alarm going, and I think at this point, what my pattern's going to be is that I'm going to spend the first fusion for making weapons. Um... See, Isanagi no Okami, Pekaro. Okay, I can probably get to one more level with Isanagi no Okami. And then after that, it'll be exclusively trying to buff up Raul's stats. The magic may say max, but we definitely need Raul to actually be at max stats. In order for it to count for the Thieves' Den completion. So, I'm gonna go ahead and make us a weapon, and we'll get to see what else we can do. Alright, so this failed the last time we tried it, but I'm gonna try to get Yagrish EX again for Haru. It's not exactly great, considering that all the rest of the guns that we're getting won't be able to be upgraded. I am still going to keep, like, the guns, and then next chance we get, we'll be able to upgrade them. But for the time being, we'll just make all of the best weapons, and then just go from there. And now for buffing up my own personas. All right, with a successful gallows execution, Snagi no Okami gets Almighty Boost. So strengthens Almighty skills by 25%. I'm tempted just to get rid of Zeodyne, to be honest. And that way, all he has is Concentrate, Salvation, and Migrate Truths. Since, honestly, those three are really all that he would really need, to be honest. Spellmaster decreases the SP cost. Magic Ability strengthens that power, which stacks with Country Maker and Almighty Boost. Repel Bless means he's only really susceptible to darkness, and Angelic Grace helps increase my own evasion. So yeah, Zeodyne, while nice, a, sim a symbolic reference, um, not as good. I'm just gonna stick with Myra Truths. Uh, 
Again, to reiterate, the reason why I'm doing this is that way I don't lose any additional uh, buffs that I can apply to Raul. I've been burnt out too many times at this point. So, I'm just gonna go with those random buffs and we'll see how well Raul goes. So, no buff to strength. Two to luck, though, and then one to all the others. Okay, well, endurance could definitely use a bit more work, but hey, whatever helps, helps. Now, one final thing before we really get into our Mementos track. Someone was asking if we'd gone over a history lesson for Mementos, and I believe I did. I wasn't sure if I had or not, so I kind of looked things up and, like, kind of compare, like, was this actually someone familiar? And I believe it was. Um, to kind of give you some idea as to, uh, what it, what exactly Mementos was. Mementos was basically... Uh, the floors are named after the Quilfoth, which are basically an inverted version of the Sephiroth. If you remember how complex I said that the history lesson with Adam Cadmon was, this was partially the reason why I thought it sounded familiar. Is because Adam Cadmon kind of comes from the same um, system as the naming convention of Mementos. I believe I mentioned that I thought it was Tartarus. I think Tartarus is related. Tartarus is based on the seven worlds of the Kabbalah. And the Kabbalah is also part of the Quilfoth, the Sephiroth, and Adam Kadmon. So when I said that, what I thought it was was Memento- or, or when I thought it was Tartarus instead of Mementos, it's actually both. <laughs> They're both- have naming conventions. Tartarus is more so the different worlds of of the Kabbalah, where it is Mementos' floors are named for the inverse. So, similar systems, but reverse. Because, you know, Mementos goes underground, Tartarus goes up to the sky. <laughs> it's symbolic! <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and head on over to Dot. Okay, so it's apparently deeper between- well, past floor 5. I guess we could potentially just go on from here and we'll see where we go. Analyzing the field. This also gives me an opportunity to do something I wasn't really planning on doing- Ooh, there's actually a lot of chests here. Let's maybe explore. And that's kind of to make a bit of an addendum to... Woo! It's a treasure chest. Too late to be sorry. Hold on. Holy crap! <laughs> we got max cash for that! Okay. And that was just a crystal skull! Wow, that was quick. Can you tell if I've grown stronger? That was just from a crystal skull! That wasn't even an Orichalcum. Anyway, this does give me a bit of an opportunity to go over something that I wasn't really expecting on doing. And that's kind of an addendum to my Kasumi rant. If you're wondering, it's like, why are you still going on about that? Don't worry, it's not going to be like hey, a, a major speak about it. I'm definitely not going to trash talk as much about her this time around. But instead, I kind of wanted to give a little bit more of my own thoughts about... Man, what is with all these powerful shadows? I kind of want to give a little bit more of my own thoughts regarding, you know, any other changes that I would have made to fix things. Whenever my foreign relatives things. come to Japan, they always rave about how much they love Japanese food. That's due to the sushi. I'd have no problem eating nothing but sushi for the rest of my life. So, basically, the thought came down to, well, I explained what I would do if I couldn't really change much of the main story. But, I kind of thought a bit more and wondered, what exactly would I change to make, you know, Kasumi and Sumire, by extension, make a bit more sense and, you know, not just 
be that uh, checkoff gun that I mentioned before. Kind of my way that I would fix her. Since my own solutions were still under the caveat of I couldn't modify the main story in any way. So I kind of thought it about it a little bit and you know, my own solution for trying to fix this? Wow, what is with these various shadows? My own thought of trying to fix uh, Kasumi's role in the story doesn't actually really involve all that much. Oh! Interesting. So apparently when you're really late into the game, um, those powerful enemies are just more powerful forms of normal personas you would have. Because we have Kushinada, uh, Kikuri Hime, and Amino Uzume. That's weird. That's really weird. Okay, this is rather interesting. This is really interesting. Um, I mean, I could just obliterate them right away. Or I could use Satin Isle. Okay, darkness seems to work pretty well. Um, let's make a Doilon. Still alive. They're tough, that's for sure. Um, lullaby? Oh, I got two of them. Oh my! Okay, well then. That hurt a lot. Let's try sword stance on Amino Uzume. Yeah! All right, then let's baton pass over to me. And then we can hit both of them with eh, Black Viper. You're mine. <laughs> nice wow, that did a lot. All right, Kushinata is down. Yeah, and there's no way to actually negotiate with them either. That's interesting. I have never faced them like this. That is really interesting. And well, I guess that's one way I can get a lot of level ups. All right, level up. Okay. The enemies are gone. We can move ahead. Very interesting. I was wondering, it's like, why are some of these enemies a lot more powerful than they really should? Joker, I guess that's the reason why. Oh, oh. Okay, so the lock chest has... Date no Fuda. So, basically the main thing that I want to talk about earlier with my addendum to the Kasumi rant is kind of wondering what exactly would I actually change? Okay. <laughs> what exactly would I change if I was in charge of, like, the story mode? And, you know, how would I make Kasumi's story feel less intrusive, basically? Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip on ahead. Okay, well, still nothing. And probably should have just skipped on ahead to the next one. Oh well. And, well, the answer that I kind of came up with, it didn't actually seem like it would have need to have made much changes at all to, to the main story. See it. Now, I don't really want to have to deal with it, considering that I'm not just plowing through all the enemies really quickly. And we have plenty of other powerful enemies, including... Huh. Last night, I dreamt the Phantom Thieves were Somewhere. kicking some serious butt. 
Let's bring that dream to life. Yeah, that's the spirit, Monachan. Just don't overdo it, okay? Oh boy. Now, I don't want to be attacked by just a bunch of enemies, so I'll hold off on the, that explanation until after we're done with the Mementos quests. Here are the search results. Good to know that I wasted that entire time going through here. Okay, so apparently, both of our requests are between the 11th floor and the top of this area. I believe it's floor 15. Here are the search results. Okay, well, that simply, that simplifies matters a bit. Hmm? Then here are the search results. Man, Oracle really wants us to get those search results. Not that I mind, it gets us to where we need to go immediately. So let's go ahead and do these requests before I go into my little addendum. That's... Okay, so going into this... Um, I do not want Violet in for this. Um... Honestly, I think Queen would be pretty decent. Everyone else, I think, is fine. So, let's go ahead and confront the guy. Who cares? Now we have quite a bit of a change in bosses. We need to take down Shadow Fuwa. It's Unicorn. Unicorn is weak to darkness, resists psychokinesis, and nulls ice and light, and only knows the skill one shot kill. This one's actually a bit different compared to some of the other... Some of the other, um, Mementos quests, and you'll see why soon enough, but... Let's go ahead and just try to deal as much damage as we can. Go with high energy and give everyone a concentrate. Uh, Queen can use an Atomic Flare. No holds barred. Nice. And then Crow can use Aegeon.
So, do you remember way, 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 way back towards the beginning of the game when we fought against the crazy cat person? And we had to basically choose the right responses in order to end the fight. Back then, I said that there was at least one other fight that used that mechanic. This is that one other fight. Yet, yeah, for some reason, Royal adds like a few different quests, but it's only these two. Again, one's at the very beginning and one at the very end that you have to negotiate your way out of the battle. Again, I feel like this is a pretty neat concept in theory, but why only twice and at the extreme ends of the game? Again, like, if it was sprinkled throughout, that would have been pretty cool. But it's only at the extreme ends of the game, so I don't understand why they basically still kind of kept these. Instead of just making them normal fights. But, whatever. I need to serve. Only Lily Nyan? What about your family? Wouldn't you protect them too? <sighs> what do you think you are? Honestly? Perhaps not. You mentioned that you talk to your wife and that your wife doesn't listen about your kid. But have you ever considered just talking to your daughter? Have you ever just tried talking to her? late. You can still go back. You can ask for forgiveness and make things right. There's still hope. And there we go. That's the end of the battle. I'm a victim too.
again. I really messed up. It's not like those are mutually exclusive. You can still have th that pursuit for Lilignan can still be a good father. I'm confident you can do both. Come on. taken care of, we get the one-shot kill skill card. Didn't actually get a chance to have him actually use that against us, but whatever. Hey. Alright, so that's one of our requests. So let's get back to our exploration. Okay, so it's not too far from here. Uh, regular chest. Where exactly. Oh, I can just go there from here. There are an awful lot of shadows in this area. Proceed carefully, Joker. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see. That one's weak. Not exactly any scan. Although, big wall! Huh? Oh. If we were still hunting stamps, that would be a type of wall you would want to try to look for. Alright, Oracle said there were a lot of shadows. Okay, weak. That one's weak. I mean, as long as we don't necessarily run across any powerful ones, I think we'll be fine. Jose's right there. Shadow identified. Awaiting Still not resort. exactly anything to worry about. Still Be nothing careful. to worry about. Man, if I was really interested in just kind of grinding out a ton of levels, that would actually not be a bad way to just do it. But I'm not really interested in doing all that. At least being super over leveled. At any rate. Our final encounter is right here. Then. Let's finish off the last Mementos request. That's... Alright, this one I'm also going to want to change up my party. I'll switch out Crow for Violet. And... You know, I think that's it. I think that's all I really need. So let's go. Some respect. 
So now we have to fight our final Mementos boss, Shadow Amasaki, Macabre. Ready, Joker. Macabre is weak to light, resists electricity, and nulls darkness, and knows the skills Summon, Masuku Kanja, and Death Sight, and possibly wasn't able to confirm these skills, Rampage, Headbutt, and Megaton Raid. It's mostly just going to try to summon a bunch of legions. Don't do anything which, you know, they're legions. They're not really all that tough. While also uh, buffing up his accuracy and doing a lot of physical damage to us. Uh, this gives me a perfect opportunity to use checkmate. And then I can hit them both with a Makogeon. Then let's go ahead and hit Legion with a Swords Dance. Not quite. Let's go. Well, shoot. Um, let's go ahead and switch to Satanial. And let's use Riot Gun. All right, that just leaves Panther, and I can hit them both with a Blazing Hell. Okay, well, that is slightly problematic. Oh no, another Legion! Whatever will I do? Okay, well that did a good amount of damage, and I can still knock down Macabre. Oh shoot, it has Evade Bless? That was not in my notes at all! All right, let's go ahead and switch on over to Violet. Go ahead. And we'll go ahead and use Vorpal Blade. Right, not bad, not bad. Um, eh, well, we'll just use an Agudine. Because I know the Legion is resistant to fire. Oh, the Legion knows Megaton Raid. Cobb just loves summoning legions. Okay, we'll use Makoge on again. Man, that evade bless is really annoying. Good. Almost got him too, so let's... Yeah, let's switch to Queen. Do it. And hit them with the Mafredi. Okay, almost finished him. Perfect! And now all we have to do is just finish the Legion. That shouldn't be too hard. Go ahead and hit him with the Sword Dance. Then switch off Satanial. And I think some. Actually. Amazing Joker. Because I don't do this enough. Let's go. Beat him up. I seriously do not use down shot anywhere near as much as I honestly should. Hey! I didn't have a choice.
Your family was right, though. You don't understand how much danger you are putting yourself and them in. Go apologize to your brother. And maybe think about how you try to gain popularity when you do. I'm sorry. Award, we get the eccentric belt. And the final mementos request has been completed. All right. Okay. So the eccentric belt, uh, for those of you who are wondering what that does. The eccentric belt simply uh, gives you ailment boost. Not really great. I mean, it might potentially be useful if you were using a bunch of status ailments, and that might come in handy not in the not too distant future. But for the meantime, um, we'll just hold off on giving anyone that accessory. At this point, our main goal is to now reach the end of the area. And then I can go over my addendum that I mentioned earlier. Um, well, just kind of got to speed through and hope I don't encounter anything too tough. Somewhere. Or anything that could potentially hurt me a lot. I'm not really seeing anything. Top shape today. Let's keep going. All right, Joker, floor it. That was very basic. <laughs> All right, so now that we've reached the end area here, now I can go over my addendum to the Kasumi Ranch. So I mentioned before over what the three different things I would do in order to fix um, my problems that I have with Kasumi. But like I mentioned before, all of those imply that I couldn't change anything with the main story. Since I feel like my problems with her deal with how important she is to the main story versus how much the game seemingly treats her as important. So how would I fix that? Well, the way that I would fix that is to make her more important within the main story. And it actually doesn't really require changing all that much. What I would do would basically be twofold. The first would be that she needs to have some sort of connection to Shido. Everything involving the main story has to connect back to Shido. Yanaboth doesn't really matter all that much, all things considered. Yanaboth is just the big bad god that shows up at the very end of the game. Now, the main concern deals with Shido, and everyone that you fight up to that point, minus Kamoshida, has some connection to Shido. Even Maruki has a connection to Shido, and he's, he's basically an epilogue. So how do we connect Kasumi, or Sumire, more specifically, to Shido? And I think the answer is actually really simple, and it involves my second change. Sumire has a unique ability. The ability to change the metaverse itself. In small areas, mind you. So basically, how I envision this going would be that Shido got some sort of researchers to kind of see how he could potentially use the metaverse to his advantage without needing to rely on a catchy. Since his main connection with the metaverse mostly deals with the research that he stole from Wakaba and with his interactions with Akechi, who is the only one who can actually enter the metaverse. So, what Shido would try to do would be to try to locate some sort of power that would allow himself control. This would be done through the various researchers that he has and 
you can even kind of tie that back to some of the other Persona games, actually. If some of his researchers are, are just... Maybe one kind of gives a disgruntled line late in the game that says how much he hated working for the Kurijo group and was glad that he joined with Shido. So that would immediately give long-term players a connection as to, oh, oh, Shido has connections to the Kurijo group, granted, former Kurijo group, without really needing it to be super elaborated on. It's just more so a throwaway line, but helps connect it to the greater Persona canon. And through that research, they were able to kind of discover that there was a person that had that sort of ability. The ability to affect the cognitive world. And they were able to trace it to a gymnast, Sumire Yoshizawa. So, how exactly would this kind of tie in with her throughout the course of the game? Well, we saw her when we were first introduced to her that... Like, she was being accosted by some sort of fan? Drunk or whatever? Some creepy dude was accosting Kasumi. And that's where we came in, we rescued her, and that was, I believe, right before... Like, that was early before we really even knew her name was Kasumi. So, I mean, that could have just been a one-off thing, and then throughout the course of the game, there were other people that tried to basically low-key kidnap her, although not in a really good way. They weren't really super skilled. Shido basically outsourced it to someone else to do it, but just no matter what happened, something always got in the way, and so Kasumi was always able to get away from Shido's goons. So that's basically what it is. It's just a few extra scenes. Could even be thrown into a few of the other scenes that Kasumi just kind of thrown into. All of which is basically that Shido needs this power for his own purposes. Now, how exactly does would this power work? Basically, it would allow Sumire to actually control any sort of palace within a small area. So, for example, you'll recall the Throughout the course of the game, we had various different barriers that we came across, and we had to affect a person's cognition. Essentially, what this power would do would be that Sumire could just simply bypass it. She could bypass that cog cognitive barrier and be able to go through. Now, that sounds really freaking OP. So, how do you make sure that that doesn't interfere with all the rest of the game? Simple. You go through the other solution that I mentioned earlier, and that you have Kasumi join you at the start of the Shido arc. You actually see that power in motion throughout various different parts of Shido's palace. Like, you see various different barriers, and Kasumi is able to bypass those barriers using her own power. She can't bypass, say, the... Um the five key cards that you need, the letters of recommendation, since that one is a lot more stronger and she's not used to that power. So her power isn't that strong, so she can't bypass that. But if you have a bunch of other barriers that would involve needing to change Shido's cognition and she can just bypass those barriers, that would show just how powerful that she could be, that she could actually rewrite someone's cognition. And that's why Shido is after her. How that exactly ties to Maruki afterward becomes a lot more interesting. So since Maruki basically has, you know, the power of Yaldabaoth, he is able to make a lot more control over his power of actualization. But... He still doesn't have all the power he needs. He still needs the power to actually rewrite cognitions. And he more so needs it in a much larger capacity beyond those he immediately knows. Even though he's he does have control through mementos, it's still limited. So, what better way to gain access to that power 
than by having the one person that he needs. And considering that he gives you a week to go and talk to the rest of the Phantom Thieves, he has that week with Sumire all by himself. And by the time you rescue Sumire, he's already been able to basically de duplicate that power and bring it into his own fold. So Maruki is able to take that power from Sumire. That way, you still have to go through all these different puzzles. You still have to go through mementos. And basically, anything that Maruki has, Sumire can't override, since Maruki has the same power and just changes it back immediately. That's kind of how that power of actualization is. Is taking that sort of power that Sumire would have had and amplifying it to a great degree. You could even use, like, the original power in the, like, the original Persona 5 story to allow Sumire to get access to the bottom floor of Mementos. Since it seems like everyone's just kind of losing faith with the Phantom Thieves, it seems weird that that sort of cognitive barrier would still lift. So that way you would need Sumire to get through that barrier. That's how you get to the entrance to the Memento's depths. So that would be all of my changes to it. And it still ultimately doesn't change a whole lot. You still have Sumire's tragic backstory with Kasumi. You still have everything mostly intact. And again, she gets introduced as a late game playable character, a late game party member. The power that's been building up as to why Shido would want it is only really applicable in the final two palaces, Shido and the Memento Steps. And that power is neutralized when it comes to Maruki's palace, which means you still have to go through everything else. So it is a bit of rewriting it, and I do realize that that basically changes her from a Chekhov gun to a MacGuffin, but she still is able to use that MacGuffin in Shido's palace. So it is just a straight up power that she has. But I feel like a MacGuffin is much better than a Chekhov gun since there is an actual use to her and there's a reason why there's so much focus because Shido's after that power and that sort of power is what helps grant Maruki his full power of actualization. He needs Sumire. And it's also could potentially be a reason that he keeps an eye on her. It's half that he's actually like worried for her well-being, but the other half is seeing like, what is this power? Or he may not even be fully realized that she has that power until you basically have to go to the Phantom Thieves and try to convince them to join you. It could just be that it's all happenstance with Maruki, but it is something that Shido is aware of. So, that's just my little bit. I know that was a lot more than I just wanted to explain, but it was just something that I thought of, and it's like, wow, now that I think about it, this whole thing could be very easily rectified, and sh it wouldn't, still wouldn't change anything. <laughs> it wouldn't change all that much, but it would fix all the problems that I have. But we have something that is new within the cognitive control room. Jose's here. Which is kind of weird. Why is Jose here? Oh, hey guys. Good job. Hmm? Jose chan, you seem kind of down. Is something wrong? Sorry, I didn't mean to make you worry. But a lot's happened lately. Before I got here, I was able to drink so many flowers. That was all thanks to you guys. So, I thought I was beginning to understand humans. But now, the more flowers I drink, the less I understand them instead. Wait, how does that work? Oh, I gotcha. It's like love, right? You know, puppy love. Huh? You understand his explanation. Sko. You know squat about love. Shut up! I know what I'm talking about, pretty much. 
Boneface is right. I've learned about humans in a manner similar to falling in love. When you learn more about a subject, it's often more than unexpected. It's the exact opposite of what you liked about it. Just like with love. Uh, right? <laughs> See? I want to learn more about humans. But I wonder if I'll learn what I need to about them just by keeping at it like this. Mind if I propose a simple solution? Why study humans at all? Why not just give it up? I can't do that. I promised someone that I'd study humans. Who'd you promise? Uh, sorry. Forget I said that. I can see how that would worry you. There are times where the truth seems to move further away from you the more you strive to reach it. I've dealt with similar problems, so I can totally relate. I aim to handle them whenever the opportunity presents itself, though. I really appreciate your help with this. So, I need an opportunity. Oh, that's it! Could I ask you guys a favor? I'd like you to fight me. Huh? Wait, fight? Why? Uh, yeah. I think you left out a step or three. I'm not following here. I've learned something from studying humans. When humans suffer, they vent their emotions so they can move forward with their lives. Well, right now, I'm suffering. The only people I can vent at are you guys. And the most common way to vent is to fight. You want to get physical here? You can't just pick a fight with us out of nowhere. What do we do? I definitely didn't expect this. Well, unless we fight him, we won't know whether or not this is his opportunity. We simply have to decide if we're going to humor him. What do you think? Should we fight Jose? Um, you kind of just sprung this on us. Why don't you let us prepare first, and then we'll see. Oh, too bad. Let me know if you ever change your mind. I stop here from time to time, so swing by if you're in the area. Well, see you later. Good job. So we actually have another optional boss fight with Jose. The interesting thing with Jose is that this one is actually available within the original Persona 5 Royal. If you're playing it through the first time, you do get a chance to fight Jose, but it requires you to have every single stamp that you could possibly have. That is your only prerequisite to fighting Jose. Once you have that, you just need to come here to the Cognitive Control Room and you can fight him. No need for New Game Plus, no need for anything else. Just get all the stamps in the game and you're ready to fight. But we've been going on for long enough, so we're gonna go ahead and call it a day here. So, next time on Let's Play Persona 5 Royal. We have two optional fights that we need to get through. One with Jose, and the other with Lavenza. These are the two things that I said that I was worrying about last time. Then you can probably tell which one is harder. <laughs> but we'll start by taking on Jose. Humoring him and maybe allowing him to vent his frustration or finding some sort of breakthrough within his research of humans. Through combat. <laughs> Until next time, everyone. Take care.